Now move to our next committee, Planning, Research, and Performance Committee, Regent Dupree. Please call your committee to order. Thank you, Regent Martin. I'd like to call the Planning, Research, and Performance Committee to order. Uh, Dr. First Quarter Report of the Board of Regents Grad Act Intervention Policy for Sussla and, this, and uh, who else? The Southern System. Oh, the Southern System. Oh, Ms. Dutillier, please proceed with this item. Thank you. The next item on today's agenda for your consideration does include the first quarterly reports from the Southern um, Shreveport Grad Act Remediation Plan and the Southern University System Grad Act Improvement Plan. Um, in June of 2015, you'll remember that we presented you with the outcome of the annual review and scoring process of, for Grad Act for year five and informed you that one institution, Southern Shreveport, had failed Grad Act for year five following that review. Um, an institution that fails Grad Act can earn back a portion of their performance funding through the Board of Regents Grad Act Improvement Policy and by entering into a Grad Act Improvement contract with the Commissioner and the Board. Um, those remediation plans were presented to you at our September Board meeting and following approval of those plans, um, SUSLA entered into a contract with us for the upcoming year of Grad Act um, remediation responding to the measures that they failed in their Grad Act report for year five. The contract that SUSLA signs includes a timeline and schedule of activities um, that will take place on their campus and initiatives that they will enforce that will hopefully improve those areas that they fell short um, in year five. It is worth noting that SUSLA, the two measures that they failed for year five were nursing and first to second year retention, both of which they would made improvements from year four to year five, just not enough of improvements to actually meet the goals that they had set at the initial um, signing of their Grad Act six-year agreements. So their remediation plan for year five is going to be a continuation of the remediation plan that they initiated for year four, um, following through with some of the um, activities that they've already put into place, um, implementing new activities, eliminating activities that they felt were maybe not as effective as they could be. And so what we will be receiving over the next year will be quarterly reports that update us on those initiatives and activities that they will be carrying out. Um, as part of the plan, the system office also has the ability to utilize a portion of that um, performance funding toward and, and implement um, things, activities, and initiatives that are aimed at improving pro uh, processes on each of their campuses that are related to Grad Act measures. So just to highlight some of the things that are happening at SUSLA uh, and that have taken place for their first quarterly report, um, they have initiated an adaptive quizzing tool called um, the Elivisor that is actually spe specifically for entry-level nursing students. You'll recall that one of the initiatives in their year four plan was to help students who were um, immediately preparing to take the NCLEX. This is building upon that and instead starting at the beginning level and incorporating a tool that works with the NCLEX and other exams that they will take along the way. It's a personalized tool that is supposed to, is supposed to support them in their um, nursing, in their journey toward uh, becoming a nurse. Um, they have obtained and have administered two uh, classic no Levitt student sac satisfaction surveys. Actually, one was given to the student body um, and a, an additional student survey, or six, excuse me, satisfaction survey was issued to faculty and staff. Um, they expect to have the results of those findings and be able to provide more detailed um, results in the second quarterly report. You may also remember that in their year four plan, SUSLA talked about um, installing a student case management software called SSP. Um, this is a software that is going to um, assist them with uh, interventions, early interventions for students who are most in need of uh, additional tutoring or uh, 
recommend recommendations to visit other uh, support services on campus and so as the installation of this software takes place they want to make it a campus-wide activity by involving key faculty and staff who work directly with students on a daily basis so, so they developed an SSP team who are actively involved in the installation of this product and um, the Chancellor actually brought it one step further and um, initiated a retention task force on campus who will work hand in hand with the SSP team who are actually more hands on by, and the retention task force is going to report directly to the SUSLA administration and eventually develop a policy surrounding use of this software. The Southern System um, Improvement Plan highlights, uh, we mentioned in their year four reports that the system developed guidelines for awarding, <coughs> excuse me, um, Grad Act grants to students who have unmet financial need, who may be close to graduation, um, who have a certain grade point average, and who um, have shown the ability to be successful and um, those that selection process is taking place right now at each of the institutions and the results of those selections and the number of awards granted will be provided in a second quarterly report the law center also implemented common exams as they stated they anticipated to do um, for two of their first year fall 15 courses and have issued an, um, a schedule of practice exams that they will be distributing to students um, starting in December and going through January for those students right now in particularly who are preparing for the February bar but they plan to continue to do this to, um, for each of the bar exams that are, that are going to be laid out. And finally, the, um, in, in response to the system's goal of developing a more data-driven decision management model, um, they are in the process of acquiring a visual analytics and data management package called Tableau, which will allow them to use their large stores of data to put it into a, um, a system that is a little bit more easy to um, make decisions on and that can be in, uh, interpreted by larger groups of, of, of individuals. Therefore, the, um, the senior staff has uh, read through and approved these reports. They have decided that these uh, first quarterly reports from SUSLA and the Southern System do fall in line with what is required through the Grad Act intervention policy. And senior staff recommends that the committee approve the first quarter reports from Southern Shreveport and the Southern University System, authorizing the Southern Board of Supervisors to release a portion of the funds to the system office and SUSLA on the predetermined schedule included in the Grad Act Performance Improvement Contract contract and the Southern System Improvement Plan. Thank you, Mr. Tillier. Very thorough. Uh, members, you've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? I so move. Second. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any opposition? Hearing none, the motion passes. Uh, we now move on to agenda item five, which is Board of Regents 2015 TOPS report. Uh, I believe Dr. Norris, you'll present this item. Thank you, Regent. Thank you, Regent Dupree. Um, Act 1202 of the 2001 regular legislative session and Act 587 of the 2014 regular legislative um, session requires the Board of Regents to prepare an annual report that analyzes various aspects of the TOPS program. Um, as you noted in the report, the um, TOPS report analyzes um, 10 years of data. So as you'll note, um, as we move through this presentation, we address students' progression through post-secondary education, and that includes preparation, participation, persistence, and graduation. I'll just give you the punchline up front. Our findings suggest that on every measure um, a student's progression through post-secondary education, retention, graduation, time to degree, TOPS recipients do better than non-TOPS um, students do. The second part of the presentation will explore the historical data on the cost of the TOPS program. So we'll go ahead and get started. We'll start with the preparation. Um, as you can see, students who complete the TOPS core do better on the ACT than students who do not complete the TOPS core. The average ACT score of TOPS recipients is 24. I want to point out that this is four points higher than the minimum score required for an opportunity award. 
You will also note that the average GPA of TOPS recipients is um, 3.35. Again, the score is much higher than the required GPA of the Opportunity Award, which is a 2.5. Moving to participation. Since 2005 and 6, 90% of the students deem, deemed eligible for a TOPS award have accepted the award and enrolled in post-secondary education in Louisiana. Um, also, we noted that the majority of, middle, um, of students come from middle and upper income households. This finding is not surprising. Um, this, is, this trend is similar to most large state merit-based programs. We also found that 79% of TOPS recipients were white and 58% were female. So moving on to persistence, we found um, that TOPS recipients persist in post-secondary education at a higher rate than non-TOPS students. 11% of TOPS recipients have had their award canceled during or immediately following their first year. I want to mention that some of these students are able to get their award back. Um, but of those who had their awards canceled, the majority are canceled due to failure to complete the 24 credit hours in the academic years. Finally, turning to graduation. Um, Students who, um, looking at TOPS and versus non-TOPS students, students who begin a baccalaureate program, a degree program with TOPS graduate within 150% of time at a much higher rate than students without a TOPS um, award. And you'll see this trend also with the associate degree. So um, the last piece I'd like to draw your attention to the historical cost of TOPS. As you can see in the figure before you, the state spent approximately $1.9 billion funding the TOPS program from 1999 to 2014. During that same time period, total expenditures on the TOPS program increased 296%. I want to mention that the growth is largely, uh, largely contributed to two factors, that is the increase in the number of students receiving the award as well as the increase in tuition prices in the state's public institutions of higher education. Um, before moving to the recommendation, um, I want to mention that we've brought the report before you this month um, because it's required by law. Uh, well, actually, Act 587 mandates that this report be submitted no later than December 1st. So um, with your approval, there are some minor revisions that we'd like to make to the report um, that won't change the substance of the report, some footnotes, adding some dates just to be as accurate as possible. Um, but as I said before, it will not change the um, substance of the report. So if there are no questions, senior staff recommends that the committee approve the TOPS report um, analysis of the TOPS program from 2005 to 14 and authorize the Deputy Commissioner for Planning, Research, and Academic Affairs to submit the response to the appropriate uh, legislative committees on behalf of the Board of Regents. Uh, thank you, Dr. Norris. Members, you've heard the recommendation for this item. Is there a move, motion to approve this as presented? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? I've got one question, Dr. Norris, real quick. Sure. Uh, the dramatic decrease in the number of TOPS awards canceled since um, 2004 and 5, you attribute that to? Well, uh, that's a good question, Regent March, uh, Martin, and we've looked at the data, and basically what's happening is you'll notice that over time we've seen this decrease, but if you look at 2014, these, this interim cohort really hasn't had enough time to lose the award, so we likely will see an increase. No faith in students then. <laughs> but we are seeing a decline. We are yeah. seeing a decline, so um, that's a good it thing. is good news. Did you say 2004 and then five? Is that what you said? I didn't hear what you said. Right. It says 2004-2005 uh, uh, had 41% canceled as opposed to 2012-13, 22% canceled. Yeah. And then 2000, yeah. like so Dr. Norris two, says, he's had... Two things are going on, as, as Dr. Norris explained. One is the 2000, let's say, 13 entering class, 
they've only had a few opportunities to lose it. Right. Uh, but the other thing is, when you get into the four or five and the five, six year, you've got the hurricane, right. and they had to deal with different issues and pass emergency rules, and so that that's probably been a good year. That continued through 2008 and nine, though. Yeah. So this uh, looks like good news. It is. I mean, I think we are seeing good news, but um, you know, we haven't really had enough time for the most recent cohort to lose the award. And, and as Dr. Norris uh, said.